بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسير لي أمري وأهل الأقطة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم dear sisters in Islam I hope everyone is doing well جزاك الله خير for taking out time to join us on this course um, this course inshallah this course will be about the great women um, in Jannah. When Allah created humanity, he made men and women. And he created us absolutely perfect in the way that we are. But unfortunately, society has made it out to be that our self, self-worth is you know, determined by um, our looks. So our self-worth is measured by how, how we look, you know, how pretty we are, how fair we are, how thin we are. And another way that society determines our self-worth is our financial status, okay? Now, Allah tells us that we don't need to fall to any of these standards because the only thing that is, that is worth looking at and the only worth that we should be giving main priority to is the relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing else matters. Nothing else in this society matters. Okay, how many cars we've got, you know, how many children we have, um, how many degrees we have, and especially not our looks, because what matters most is in our hearts the relationship that we have with Allah is what matters the most. Now, as, as Muslim women, we are told by Allah to cover ourselves, okay? We know this, that as Muslim women, uh, when we get to a certain age, then we must cover our hair, we must dress modestly, we must um, cover our bodies up. And that in itself just shows that it doesn't matter how your body is or how big your body is or how beautiful your body is, okay? Allah has asked us to cover ourselves because what really matters is not our beauty, okay? But it's, it's not our beauty or our size. It's actually what is deep-rooted within our hearts, okay? And that is our relationship with Allah. But of course, we are living in such dangerous times, you know, the fitna of social media, um, the fitna of, you know, Snapchat filters and Instagram and makeup, you know, you name it. We are living in such dangerous times that our young daughters and our young sisters, nieces and cousins, they are growing up thinking that their self-worth all depends on how attractive they can be and how skinny they can look yeah how many followers they can get on instagram or how many likes they can get right that is not how we are supposed to be living as muslims but nowadays the way the world is now that is that is how life has become now we need to take it upon ourselves to educate our young sisters and our youngsters and the generation that's coming after us that these things are not important. What is the most important is our relationship with Allah and it is our duty. We can't sit back and say, well, it's not my duty. They don't listen to me. It's not my duty or, you know, her mom can tell her or her dad can speak to her. If we are seeing that these things are happening in our own families, then it is our duty and it is our responsibility to further educate ourselves and then to educate the youngsters in the family as well. Because at the end of the day, Allah will ask us on the day of judgment, Allah will ask us, how did we protect our iman? How did we protect our youngsters? Okay. Allah says, the most honored of you in the eyes of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. Okay? So that in itself just shows that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, what your status is in the community or how many cars you drive or how many houses you own. None of this matters. What matters in the eyes of Allah 
is the one who has the most taqwa, the one who is the most God-fearing. Um, there is actually a, a whole surah in the Quran named after women, Surah Nisa. Allah talks about how he created um, women. Allah says, O oh people, be conscious of your Rabb who created you from one man, okay, one single soul, and from him, Allah created the women. And of course, we know from the story, uh, Prophet Adam, alayhi salam, he was the first human being to be created by Allah. Okay. Um, and after a while, when Prophet Adam, alayhi salam, um, he felt, he started to feel a bit lonely. He made dua and he said, I am lonely. He said to Allah, I am lonely. Um, take away this loneliness. And then Allah gifted him with um, Hawa, alayhi salam. So from man, okay, um, we have been created um, um, after Prophet Adam and Islam, okay, so um, Hawa alayhi salam was created. And of course, you know, we, this was a gift to Prophet Adam alayhi salam. So we need to also, we need to act like we are gifts to men because we are a gift to men, okay. Um, and this, this um, course um, on the great women of Jannah, inshallah, it will, it will be, be a motivation for you and for myself as well to accept, you know, these pure-hearted, um, God-fearing women as role models, inshallah. And, you know, may Allah give us all the ability to pass on everything that we, we will learn um, to our young daughters, who, of course, like I mentioned, live in such a world now where the Muslim female role models are these Instagram influencers, okay? If you go and ask a young girl out there, maybe a girl in her teenage years, if you go and ask her to name you one, one uh, female companion, or if you were to ask them to name you someone who inspires them, someone who their role model is, I really highly doubt that these young girls can give you any names or give us any names of any of the Sahabiyats, okay? And um, it's a terrible thing, but these are the times that we're living in now. And it does seem like <laughs> everyone has forgotten about these amazing historic individuals, okay, who were promised Jannah, who paved the way for women now. But everyone's forgotten them, okay? So it is down to us, okay? It is down to us to educate our daughters and our um, children um, to show them who the real role models are, not these Instagrammers who, you know, have a, may have a hijab on, but their bun is so high. They, they, they got really high ponytail. Or they've got the hijab on and they've got fringes sticking out. Or they're wearing an abaya, but they're, you know, their breast shape is showing. They're wearing tight clothes, Yeah. There is not one single, I don't think one single role model out there on Instagram that is actually going to influence our daughters in a good way, okay? Those role models are, they, they are all in, um, our children need to open up books and read about all these influential women um, of, our, of our past. And there's many, many books out there on all these women, inshallah. If we have a look, then we can find what we need. And um, so this course is about the four great women of Jannah. But aside from these four, there are many more female companions who were, you know, very pure and they were virtuous, virtuous women as well. So they were, they, you know, they all had noble character and they were active in religion as well as in other things like business and politics. Um, they, were, they were, they had courage, they had bravery, they were kind um generous and they were very very passionate in their belief of Allah and in their support of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now if we look look into the books of sirah we'll find many stories um of um of many of these role models that we can follow like i said it's not only these four great women that we're talking about there's many more as well okay um <laughs> Okay, okay. 
Right. So inshallah, we, we are going to start um, by speaking about the first um, the first women that I would like to talk about, which is Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha. The Prophet ﷺ said, Sufficient for you among the women of mankind are Maryam bint Imran, Khadija bint Khawailid, Fatima bint Muhammad, and Asya, the wife of Fir'aun. So the first um, woman we're going to speak about is Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha. Now, she was known as Ummahatul Mu'mineen, which means the mother of uh, mother of the believers. Now, Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha, um, her full name is Khadija bint Khuwailid. Okay, her father's name was Khuwailid. Narrated by Abu Hurair radiallahu anha, Jibril came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and said, O oh Allah's messenger, this is Khadija coming to you with a dish, having meat soup. When she reaches you, greet her on behalf of her Lord and on my behalf and give her the glad tidings of having a palace made of qasab in Jannah where in there will be no noise or any um, toil, so no fatigue, no trouble, etc. So Allah was so pleased with her, with her Khadija radiallahu anha, that she was the only person that Allah sent salam to through am through angel jibril alayhi salam okay um she was also the first person to accept islam and she was the first wife of prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam okay so he did not marry um again while she was alive alive and of course after she passed away then he did um marry and the strength and the noble characteristics of Khadija radiallahu anha, okay? It was so much that imagine Allah honored her. No other uh, female has had this honor, okay? The fact that Allah, she was greeted by Allah through um, his angel. Now, um, she was the mother of um, Hazrat Fatima radiallahu anha, as we know, um, that was one of Prophet sallallahu children. Okay, so Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha, she was born in Mecca. Um, her mother's name was Fatima and her father's name was Khuwailid. Okay, so if you want to uh, make some notes, then that's absolutely fine. So her mother's name was Fatima and her father's name was Khuwailid. Um, she was uh, born in Mecca. Now her father, he was a popular leader amongst the tribe of Quraysh, and um, he was a very, you know, successful and prosperous businessman. So Hazrat Khadija and she grew up in luxury. Um, you know, she she didn't, she wasn't. They weren't poor because of her father's business. She grew up in luxury. Um, she married a man called Abu Hala, and they had two children. Hala and Hind. Um, unfortunately, her first husband, he passed away. So she became a widow. So she was a single mother um, with two children. And then sometime later, she married um, another man called Atik. And they had one child called Hinda. And he also um, passed away. So now she's got three children. Um been widowed, married and widowed twice. And she's a single parent and she's also a businesswoman. Now, um, she wanted to, of course, you know, devote all her time now to her children and, you know, their upbringing and 
she was she was an extremely talented businesswoman. She was very, very hardworking. And this was known to people all over that Khadija bin Khwarid, she is one of the top business women out there. Um, she's extremely talented and successful. So just another point I wanted to uh, point, just something else I wanted to point out here was how, how Khadija radiallahu and how was as a businesswoman, okay? So we can use Khadija as an example when we tell our children about how much of a good character she was and what kind of person she was. Because I do feel like sometimes we feel so alienated that we don't know these uh, historic women, okay? We feel like, oh, they're so, from so long ago, you know, they, I can't relate to them. I don't, know, I don't know what they did in that life back then, you know, 1400 years ago. I can't relate to them because now I'm living in this modern world. So one way I realized that you can relate, we can relate to a lot of these Sahabiyats and a lot of these Sahabas as well, okay? Because they did lots of things that we're doing now. We've got so many women that are business women now, okay? We've got so many females that are opening up their own businesses, whether it's a restaurant or whether it's a maktab or whether it's a school whether it's a tuition center, whether it's a clothes shop, whether it's a, you know, a fashion boutique, whatever. They're opening up their own businesses, left, right and center, you see women doing it. Hazrat Khadija was the same. Yes, her business might not have been in dresses and, you know, makeup and things like that, but she bought goods and she, she sold them off and she got a lot of profit for it. So she was an extraordinary businesswoman. So when we speak to our children about Hazrat Khadija, we can relay this back to them that look, she was a top businesswoman. She was boss. She was basically a boss. She had men working for her, okay? She had three children. She was a single mother. So if she can do that, she's literally, she was actual literal goals. That's what you call goals, okay? So talk to your children and tell them the fact that she did all of this by herself. She didn't have no husband to help her, okay? She's raising three children. She's also doing this business. She's employed so many people. And with these things that we can connect people from our past and children will hopefully not feel so alienated and they'll feel like, you know what? I do kind of feel a sort of connection, okay? I can relate to them, yeah? So this is something that I wanted to point out here that I, I feel like would be really good for us as parents to um, try and think of things that will uh, make them feel that they can relate to everyone in the past, inshallah. Okay, so moving on. Okay, um, so um, Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha. So her business um, was she exported goods from uh, places far away like Syria and then her employees they would buy it and then they would sell it in those markets now of course in those times there was no form of communication so a lot of her business dealings and all her transactions they depended on the loyal loyalty of her uh, employers now Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha she had been hearing um, about this person and she, she's been hearing about the loyalty and how trustworthy and how um, good this young man called Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is so she sent a job offer to him because what started happening was the people that she used to send over um, to different countries they would come back and they wouldn't um, they wouldn't be such a good prophet so she kind of started doubting them that you know they're not being trustworthy and of course you know they were keeping some of the profit for themselves and of course she couldn't exactly travel with them having three children with her and so now she needed to look for someone who was extremely trustworthy. So she found out about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she sent um, a job offer to him. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he accepted and he, he began to work for her. So before he actually started working for her, she sent him on a business trip with her, one of her slaves called Maisara. And they went on a business trip um, to you know, do uh, buying and selling. And this trip, it proved to be very successful because when they returned, they came back with a lot of profit and the business, uh, the, the journey and the trip was very successful. 
And of course, Maisara reported everything back to Hazrat Khadija, everything that he had witnessed. Um, he was very, very impressed. The way that Prophet Sallallahu dealt with people, the way his transactions were, the way he spoke to people, the way he respected people, his loyalty, his trustworthiness, um, his truthfulness. Um, Maisara was very impressed with it and he reported back to his boss and um, they also made a very good profit from that trip. So of course, Hazza Khadija radiallahu anha, she was deeply impressed. And, you know, she started thinking of, you know, maybe proposing to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, one night she had a dream that um, the shining sun had descended from the heavens and it was in her courtyard and it was radiating her house. So when she woke up, um, she went to her old, uh, she had an old cousin called Waraka bin Nofal. Um, he was a blind man. Uh, he was a Christian, but he was very, very knowledgeable because he had read so many books. And um, when he... He heard her dream. This was a good dream. The sun that she saw descending, um, it indicated that Prophet Sallallahu was was to um, grace her home and her life, okay? So this is what he said to her. And of course, after, after this meeting, Hazrat Khadija, she was even more, um, you know, determined to send a proposal to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, she obviously, she didn't know how to go about it. So she had a very close friend. Um, her name was Nafisa. And one day, um, she told Khadija that, you know, uh, you know, what was bothering her. And she said to Khadija that she would go and um, help her out. So um, Nafisa, she immediately went to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she, you know, she requested that she, can she ask him a very personal question. And then uh, Prophet Sallallahu said, of course you can. And then she asked him if he would be willing to, you know, marry um, a very success successful lady who's from a noble family, who's from a wealthy family. And Prophet Sallallahu he, of course, he mentioned that he, he was not financially, you know, that well off. And then she asked him that, would this, would this woman be willing to, um, to marry him, although his financials... Um, financial status is not that good and then um, when he learned that it was Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha proposing and she was willing to accept him you know he was overjoyed of course and at that time Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was um, 25 years old and Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha um, she was according to some narrations she was 28 and according to some other narrations, she was 40 years old, okay? So they both got married and um, uh, the two uncles of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hamza radiallahu anhu and Abu Talib, they approached um, Hazrat Khadija's uncle, Omar bin Asad, with the, with the actual formal proposal. And it was accepted and the date was fixed and everyone started preparing for the wedding, okay? And... Um, so they were married um, at the age, um, at the age, Prophet Sassam was married at the age of 25. Now, um, they were very, very blessed in their marriage. They had six children all together. Um, they first had two sons called Qasim and Abdullah. So his first son was Qasim, which is why sometimes Prophet Sallallahu um, is also referred to as um, Abu Qasim, yeah, which means the father of Qasim. And then uh, they had Abdullah, two little boys who um, they passed away when they were small, okay? And then uh, followed their four daughters, Zainab, Ruqayya, Um Kalthum, and Fatima, radiallahu anhum. So I'll just repeat that. The two sons were Qasim and Abdullah, and then followed the daughters, Zainab, Ruqayya, Um Kalthum and Fatima. And all of the children were absolutely amazing. They were wonderful. They were intelligent. And it was a very, very happy and peaceful. And it was a very, very peaceful time for Prophet. And you know, he was living his life happily. But 
Prophet Sassam always felt that something was missing. So he was always extremely restless. And what he would do was he would retire for one month um, every year. And he would go to the cave of Hira to dedicate himself um, entirely to prayer and med meditation. So this is also known as tahannuth, okay? When you just go off into isolation um, just by yourself, just to reconnect with your Lord and just to think about Allah and um, you leave everything behind. Now, one day when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, was there, and by the way, can I just point out, um, so when he would disappear and he would go to Cave Hira to do Tahannuth, his wife Khadija, عنها, she would support him, okay? So she never said, you know, why are you going off and you keep leaving with the children? Because remember, they've got, she had three children from her previous marriages. And then she also had the six children that she had with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, you know, she was single-handedly with them. When Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would go to practice tahannuth and she did, um, she supported him. So she never made him feel, um, you know, she never made him feel demotivated or never made him feel disheartened. You know, she, he had to do something to reconnect with his Lord. She let him go. So this is another lesson for us to take, you know, just to be supportive of our husbands, okay, and of each other when there's something that is on our minds, not to go and nag the person and make them feel bad. If they're already feeling bad, it's going to make them feel worse, yeah? And Hazrat Khadija instead, she used to pack his food and she would take it for him. She would climb up the mountain and she would take his food, okay? This is not someone who was a young you know, feisty, strong woman. She was, she was getting older, and she still did this. Okay, she looked after him. Of course, she didn't go and stay with him, but every now and again, she would take up his food. She would climb all the way up to the top of the mountain, take his food, and come back down again. Okay, and she didn't used to bug him or annoy him and say, you know, hurry up, what are you doing? Why are you still here? Come back home, etc. So, inshallah, this is this should be a lesson for us as well. Okay, so what happened was one day when he was in Cave Hira, he felt the presence of another being, okay, who held him really, really tight and, and then loosened him and then he asked him to read. Okay, so this, this figure or this thing um, that came into the cave was asking um, Prophet Salasam to read. Okay, he said, Iqra. And of course, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not know how to read, so he answered that he was illiterate. He didn't know how to read. But again, the person repeated the same uh, um, act and then the same phrase and said, read Iqra. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again said, I don't know how to read. Because remember, when he was growing up, he lost his mother and father at a very young age. And then his uncle, Abu Talib, took him in. And Abu Talib had a few children of his own. So he couldn't afford to send Prophet Sallallahu to a school or a maktab to learn how to read and write. Okay. Hence, Prophet Sallallahu was illiterate. And then finally, um, he read these um, as Angel Jibreel Alayhi Salaam it was. He said, read in the name of your Lord who has created all that exists. He has created man from clot. Read and your Lord is the most generous who has taught the writing by the pen. He has taught man that which he knew not. Okay, so we know that this is Surah Ala, um, Iqra, um, ayah number one to five. And then um, the angel um, disappeared. Now, of course, this was a very, very tremendous, tremendous, it was a very extraordinary uh, experience that Prophet Salaam had just witnessed. Okay, imagine this, you're in the cave all alone and then suddenly this something happens, something is strange and it was very overwhelming. And of course, Prophet Sallallahu was very shaken up and he was sweating and he ran home and he asked Hazrat Khadija to cover him. Okay. He said, Zammiluni, Dathiruni. He asked um, Hazrat Khadija, Allah, and her, his beloved wife, to cover him um, with a blanket or, you know, a sheet. And then after lying down for some time, he became a little bit more relaxed. And then when he had calmed down, 
um, he told his wife everything that had happened and he said, you know, he's fearing for his life and he narrated the whole incident to her. And Hazrat Khadija, anha, look at her response, Allah, all that loyalty and just consoling her husband, holding on to him, you know, covering him with a blanket, just holding on to him, just comforting him, protecting him from any sort of danger. And she said to him that Allah would surely protect him from any danger and would never allow anyone to, you know, do anything to cause him harm. Because Prophet ﷺ was a man of peace, okay? And he was always extending the hand of friendship to all and he never, he, he never lied. He was hospitable. Um, you know, he carried the burdens of other people. He helped those that were in need. He was always looking out for people. And Hazrat Khadija said these soothing words to him. And she said, Allah will look after you. Yeah, Allah is going to protect you from any danger. So do not worry. And of course, these soothing and encouraging words, you know, these sympathetic words that um, Hazrat Khadija anha gave to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it meant a lot. She was very understanding. Okay. And she gave him a lot of confidence. And just, just, this, just this one little incident here just shows us that, subhanAllah, like the way they were as husband and wife, you know, the way how soft spoken she is with her husband, how understanding and patient she is. Patient is a really, really strong and very important word that we all need to um, start acting upon in our lives, especially when it comes to dealing with our husbands. Okay. Um, we know as women, we tend to probably go off on one sometimes and have, you know, mood swings or whatever the reason is. Always think about Hazrat Khadija. She didn't have it easy. Her life was not easy at all. Okay, she had a she lived a very hard life, and on top of that, um, marrying the Prophet you know, of course, you know she was also um, part of so many things that he went through. So, and all the non-believers, uh, the disbelievers, tried to attack Prophet in so many ways, so many times. Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha was always there. She didn't run away from him. She was there to support him and to always be by his side. Okay, she always comforted him and she was always with him. So soon after what happened was um, as a Khadija radiallahu anha, she took Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to um, meet with her cousin. You know, the cousin uh, Waraqa bin Nofal we spoke about before. And he immediately, he recognized that, you know, this is a messenger of Allah. And um, Waraka, who was, you know, he was very, very old and he was very knowledgeable, like I mentioned. So he's, he read, he's, he had already read so many books and, um, you know, he knew that there was a special prophet, the last final prophet that was coming. And um, he, he said that this basically, he felt like this is what the, these, these books uh, were talking about. Now, Prophet so he had, uh, he had um, his six children, Khadija. Um, his, he had six children uh, with Khadija, Allah and her, and um, he didn't have any other children with any of his other wives. Yeah. So um, Zainab, Ruqayya, Um Kalthum, and Fatima, they were all um, the daughters of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and their mother was uh, Ummahatul Mu'mineen, Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha. Okay, now, Prophet Sassam, he had two sons, Qasim and Abdullah, like we spoke about. Um, his second son, Abdullah, was also known as Tahir, or sometimes he was also known as Tayyib as well. Um, they both died in their childhood. And of course, um, this was a very terrible time for, um, and a very depressing time for Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha. And, um, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa okay but this is also something that we can relate to as well so if anyone has lost a child then you know the you know look up to Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and look at the patience that they had yeah the patience that they had was absolutely amazing um, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said we know that death is inevitable and is a fact of life we also know that those who are left behind will catch up with those who have gone ahead if this were not so 
we would grieve even more for Ibrahim. So um, at this moment, he's talking about another son that he had uh, with uh, Maria Qibitiya, um, who was who was his um, slave then, okay? So he had another son, and that son also passed away. The heart mourns and the eye weeps, but it is not fitting that we utter words which might displease our Rabb, our creator and our sustainer, okay? So he's lost, um, Prophet Hassan lost three sons, um, a, a very young age okay and of course they continue to be patient and imagine as a mother losing three of your baby boys is obviously not an easy thing to go through but she was um she had strong faith in Allah and she knew that everything happens for a reason um and she you know she remained steadfast upon her deen. you know she didn't she didn't lose her faith or anything like that okay right and um, we'll leave it up until here for today inshallah um our next lesson, we will go into talking about what happened to um, the Muslims in the valley of Abu Talib. And, and then inshallah, we'll um, finish up till here today. Um, I pray Allah, the Most High, blesses us with these qualities of Khadija, Khadija anha, and unite us with her in Jannah. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.